Welcome to part two of our discussion about Siemens A7300 software redundancy. Uh, if you missed the first episode, there will be a description or a link to the in the description below. Please go and take a look at that if you uh, if you're not familiar with the basic operation of a PL of a normal standard PLC from Siemens. Okay, let's go over to the redundant PLC now. So we've got a rack with a PLC on it, somewhere. Maybe a power supply and a CPU. And there's another rack with another power supply and CPU. These may or may not be in the same cabinet, depending on the rules for your, your installation. Right, so then there'll be some remote I.O. ET200M stations. They got a power supply, an interface module, and a second interface module, and then I.O. And there might be another one. Again, with the power supply, interface module, another interface module, I.O. and so on. I'm going to call this CPU, CPU A, PLC A, CPU A, call this CPU B, in which case this interface module is interface module A, and that one's B, same way this one is A, this one is B. The CPU has got a few bus DP connection and CPU A connects to interface module A on the first rack and interface module A on the second and subsequent racks. CPU B also got a profit bus DP connection and it connects to the same thing on the second to the B interface module on all the, on all the racks. The hardware configuration of these two PLCs will be identical for this hardware. Right, let's take a look at the software. Software is very similar to the software you saw for the normal PLC. So we have we run through the startup, then all the all the uh, self-diagnostics and so on. Then it drops into OB100, and in OB100 we call a special function block supplied by the Siemens software redundancy. Uh, Siemens SWR package. It's called SWR start. From there, we then go into our. We start our main loop. So we do read inputs. We write that into the input image. And then we drop into OB1. And in OB1 there we call a function called SWR ZYK Zyklus for German for cycle. So software redundancy cycle. And in between calls to to this function block, we have our redundant program. So we have function blocks, function calls control blocks etc and then we call SWRZYK again that's OB1 and OB1 then operates on program state
just like what we saw on the other PLC, the program state is all your instance DBs, global DBs, M flags, and so on. Then we have an output image. And right, the outputs. So we read from inputs. The program reads from the input image, does all the work with program state, writes to the output image at the end of the OB1, we write to the outputs. And then back to here again. So that's exactly the same as what we saw on the other PLC. Let's take a look on this. This PLC is exactly the same. It's got the startup, OB100. In OB100, we make a call to SWR start. Then read the inputs. Then we drop into OB1, and in OB1 we call SWRZYK. Then we have identical program blocks, FB, FCs, there are more than one of these. A little redundant program. End of this, we call same function block again. And again, we we'll read these inputs into our input image. We update our program state. And we have an output image. And we we'll write out to the outputs. the same. We're reading the input image to the program. The program writes the output image into the program. End of OB1, we write out the outputs and then go back into our main loop. Exactly the same again. But let's assume that CPU A is the master. So it's in control of the software redundancy. And CPU B is the standby. These two PLCs talk to each other. They talk to each other over a separate channel. The simplest version is over MPI. So, over MPI, they talk to each other. If this one is the master, then it runs the end of this call, it runs through the um, redundant program, updates the program state exactly as a normal PLC would, comes to the end and does this call. And what happens here is this block picks up the program state and sends it over MPI. to this block on the standby PLC. The standby PLC then updates the program state. And because it knows it's in standby, it will jump that program and it will not run the redundant program. At the end of the OB1, when it gets, when it reaches to the air again, it then picks up the state of the, of the standby PLC and sends it over MPI to the master PLC. So the master PLC knows what the standby PLC is up to, and the standby PLC knows what the master is up to, and it keeps the program state identical to the master state. We'll discuss what that means in a further video. 
but right now I think that's enough to get an idea of what we're looking at. I'll see you in the next video.